So you're going to sit here and ask me why I think uh, going independent is better than being on a major label? That money don't add up. Don't click off because you got to listen to it. And this is real life. If you're successful and you got family members looking at you like, oh, man, he ain't throwing the bag here. That's something we got in our community, whether it's black and Latino, where somebody makes it in the family and the whole family are like an anchor. I said the other day we was in an interview with NASDAQ and Forbes and they was asking me about business and, you know, all my accomplishments. You know, it's crazy. They got my net worth at four million when I go in there and shit, I got to watch four million. <laughs> they got me up, but it's cool. Let's fly under the radar. But Forbes said, Joe, come through. Let's talk about business. Well, in the business, they asked me independent or major. And I said the major labels, the major record labels are a Ponzi scheme. What does that mean, Joe? It means that when you as smart as me and you've been around long enough as me, you realize that it's just like a bank. Most of the time, they take a kid that grew up in the projects, projects, baby, that's talented. If you look at all of us, I think the only guy who had a good upbringing that got signed was Chance the Rapper. It's probably the only guy who they finagled his way in the system. Um, but other than that, everybody was broke. Everybody's a project baby, right? Looking for their way out. And so... Here you go, they give you money up uh, to make your album or whatever. They charge you, though they make the profit of the records, they charge you whatever they spend on the video. It ain't like we 50-50 partners, they pay half of the video, we pay half of the... Look, at the end of the day, the math, you could bring the, a scientist who wins the Nobel Peace Prize to do the accounting on major labels math, and they always can't figure it out. And so it's robbery all the way through. And you sing your life, your pain, your this, that, and they own your shit. So that's why I say it's a Ponzi scheme. I sold 2 million records, still in recoup. I have an album, Jose sold 2 million records. When I get my statement from the major label 20 years later, I still owe them money. I put out an album independently on Empire and get distribution. My album might sell 250, 300,000 records. I make millions of dollars off of it. What's the difference? You know, I used to walk. I'm going to tell you this story. I don't know if I told you it before, but uh, I used to walk in Atlantic Records and they had a poster of me six stories high. Like it was one of them big... Uh, lobbies where, where it's just like six floors you take the elevator up so every day I walk in they had a post of me like that and uh, I'm selling millions of records um, I got, got these two stories in one and so I'm going up there every day hanging out with the owner of the company the boss not the owner, the boss, the president, CEO, whatever, hanging with him thinking he's my man because he's the first person who gave me a, a, a multi-million dollar check. So I trust him, right? So mind you, this guy gasses me to drop an album in December, which is the fourth quarter. The day I dropped my album, Jay-Z, Mariah Carey, Missy Elliott, and a bunch of other guys was dropping their album at the same time. So I kept telling them, yo, you sure that we should drop the same day? We're going to lose. Nah, we're going to drop it. We got your back. We got your back. Are you sure that we're going to drop? Because I feel like we're going to lose. We're going up against Jay, Jay Z, Mariah Carey, Missy Elliott, you name it. So we put the album out. The album uh, flopped. 
It sold a half a million records. Uh, it didn't sell the two million records the album before. So, and I was wondering why this man made me drop an album on the day that he knew I was going to lose. Later, I found out that at that time, when they used to sell physical CDs, you had to go to the store and buy that. It wasn't streaming sales. That Atlantic Records had shipped 2 million CDs to the stores that were non-refundable. So even though I only sold a half a million, even though I was a failure and I sold a million five less than the album before, they had made their money off of 2 million albums. So according to them on the books, he's selling his boss, Fat Joe, sold two million albums. Meanwhile, I don't get paid because they shipped two million. I don't see none of the results to this day. I'm still unrecouped. If you understand what I'm saying to you, let me see some fire signs. Or if I'm talking too fast or I'm talking too deep and you don't get it, I could jump subject. But... I go there, my poster sixth floor. One day I go there, they got a TI poster, sixth floor. They take my shit off. So I go up there and they say, Joe, TI just sold two million. You sold 500,000, you're a failure. That didn't sit well with me. Because in order to be successful, you got to be a narcissist. You got to be delusional. You got to believe in yourself like nobody else believes in you, right? So I go home that night, I can't sleep. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I go back. Next day, I have a meeting with them. I say, hey, listen, man, you're right. I am a failure. I'm going to leave and be the old school at noon. I'm going to go underground. You'll never hear from me again. They were like, sure, sure. Like they were doing me the biggest favor. I was doing them a favor. They let me go off the label. I go independent. I sell 4 million records. With Make It Rain. The album goes gold, but this time it's independent. I make $7 a record. I make $3.5 million off of that. So you're going to sit here and ask me why I think uh, going independent is better than being on a major label. That money don't add up. If I was to give you 10 fake phones and tell you to sell them for $10 outside in the rain and snow, but you sell it for $10 and you only make 10 cents, you built the phone, you put the information in it, you put your heart, sweat and tears, your pain, and you only get 10 cents? So that's why I said major labels are Ponzi scheme. Now, do I have friends and everybody that works for the labels and all that? I'm not trying to stop y'all money. You know I love y'all. I want y'all to keep working. But they asked me, what is the difference between independent and major? Independent is much harder to jump off a career. But you know what they do anyway. Let me tell you what the major labels do. And I'm going to get off this, right? Major labels. Watch. Who's hot all over the country? So say, uh, I don't want to use her. Um, say somebody gets hot in Memphis. The major labels see that they're playing their music down there. People buying their music. They go down there and offer them a check. It's not like the major label made you hot. It's not like they helped you create the song or got you hot. You're already hot. You about the bus open, they know it, so they come down there and act like they're your friend and give you a check. Now they own all your shit, and you're a slave to the system. Peter Gunn, sorry about your moms, man. God bless you, man. I've been praying for you and your moms in a major way. I just want you to know. I know you love your moms. I've seen the beautiful uh, going home in 174th. I love you, brother. You know that. I already checked on you personally, but... um. 
I'm praying for you and your family. But this is what the fuck they do. And you know what happens with these labels? They act like they love you. They act like they're your family. They befriend you. The minute you fail or flop, you see them at an award show and they run away from you like you got AIDS. And I'm being nice about it because I got a lot of friends that work for record labels and all that. But I'm being nice about what I'm explaining to you. It is what it is. So I'm into ownership. Today I gave a speech to MarketAmericaShop.com. I'm into you being an entrepreneur. I am very twisted with my thoughts on even college. Because I feel like college teaches you how to be an employee. How to be the best employee. I'm into you owning shit. That way you can never get fired. And, and I see more power in the woman selling oranges on the highway than I do on somebody who thinks they have a stable job. Because once times get bad, it's over. Times get bad, we got to lay off 100 people. You, you could be number one. I watched Cedric Hollywood get fired from Miami radio station when he was the number one rated. But they had to make way. You know what happens when you're successful and you're number one? You build up a certain salary. If you're the best, they got to pay you, correct? That's why you're working, so they can pay you because you're the best. Now, when you're the best, they got to pay you. Now, somebody gets an idea and say, well, we could put some young guy in there or girl in there for one-tenth of his salary, and we could probably make it still go number one. And so there is no security in a job. There is no security. I'll tell you about my cousin, my titi Amalia. She worked for a company for 20 some 30 years. She pretty much thought she was the logo. One day the son takes over the company and he tells her the first thing he says, Amalia, you got to go. She came to my house. She was depressed. We had her there for weeks. She kept waking. Oh, I got to make them coffee. Oh, I got to, yo, titi Amalia, you don't work for them no more. They fired you. So I look at life a different way. You know what I'm saying? Life's a journey. I'm to the point of where I'm old enough where I feel like God is guiding everything. And so whether it's good, whether it's bad, sometimes friends turned on me and it hurt me so much. And I kept saying, God, why? God, why? But he was like, I want you to have these blessings because you weren't it yourself. Not have... Doubters, people who don't see the same vision that goes around you. Get these people out of here. They're stealing from you, Joey. Get them out of here. And you get rid of them and you got to walk that street by yourself. And it seems hard and it feels like, damn, am I cursed? But it's actually a lesson to get you through the future. So you can get all your blessings. Not the people who've been stealing from you. I hope you understand that. Peter Guns, what's up, my brother? Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Meaning, when it goes down and you, and, and you need someone on your side, you need people by your side, they're not there, you don't need them. You got over it, God is showing you those people are not your people. The sketchy, what's up, my brother? So God shows you. He puts you through tough times and it's a journey. Right now, let, let God go. They start going viral, dissing me, this and this and that. I'll be like, yo, bro, my God tells me that this can't affect me. And so if you're on YouTube or somewhere trying to diss me, you're playing yourself because one, I'm not looking at you. I'm not listening to you. And my God is supernatural. And so... The man going to take me everywhere I go. One week you could diss me and you could say, I don't want to bring it up. You go on at me. Oh, Joe showed a sneaker. I'm a sneaker collector. But you did the next day I'm sitting at the White House with the lady y'all acting like y'all trying to defend. And then when I sit with her, you get mad at me for sitting with her. And so I can't pay attention. I can't pay attention. What I can do is say, 
Hey, did we give more jobs to our, our friends and our people? Yes. Uh, the rich player just opened a new business where he's going to employ people? Yes. Uh, is everybody happy and healthy? That's all I care about. All this other mumbo jumbo. I have an, I, I'm telling you right now, if you got friends, so-called friends, what's that record by Jonah Lucas? Find it for me. Find it for me. Jonah Lucas. Find that record for me. I'm going to end this show with this and listen to it. Don't click off because you got to listen to it. And this is real life. If you're successful, I'm not even just saying if you're a rapper, this record really goes to you or somebody in entertainment. But if you're successful and you got family members looking at you like, oh, man, he ain't throwing the bag here. That's something we got up in our community, whether it's black and Latino, where somebody makes it in the family and the whole family are like an anchor. They holding on to your shit like a shit, trying to bring that down. Everybody got an idea. Yo, Joey, can I open a Frank for the truck? Joey, can I get money for this? Yo, Joey, can I do Bro, 